Hey guys, so a classmate asked, what is the rule of multiplication and addition, and how do we use it for Punnett squares? Let's first understand why we need to know such rules. We may already be used to Punnett squares, this visual representation of crosses that allows us to see the probability of getting a certain genotype for our offspring. For example, let's say we have two dogs that have different fur colors, black or brown, with black fur being a dominant trait and brown being recessive. If we have a homozygous recessive dog, then it will have the alleles lowercase b, lowercase b, to showcase that it will have brown fur. Let's say we cross it or mate it with a heterozygous dog, meaning that it has an uppercase b, lowercase b. This Punnett square that we set up lets us see the probability of their children having certain genotypes and phenotypes, leading to half of the puppies being heterozygous and half homozygous recessive or half of the puppies with black fur and half with brown. Now that was a simple cross, and for that, writing a Punnett square is a very quick and easy tool to use. But let's say we have a more complex question like this. In a cross between a dog with this genotype and another dog with this genotype, what is the probability that the offspring will be capital A, lowercase a, capital B, lowercase b, and capital C, capital C? There are now more alleles involved, because no longer are we focusing on just fur color for our puppies, but also other traits, such as height or eye color. The rule of multiplication tells us that for independent events, the probability of both occurring can be calculated by multiplying their probabilities. To know whether or not we should use this rule is if there is the word and in the question. In our example, the independent events are the two genotypes of the parent. We know we use the multiplication rule because we want to see the probability of both events occurring to create our desired genotype, shown by the presence of AND. To solve this problem, we're going to separate each parent's genotypes into their separate alleles that code for the same trait. Then we will set up separate Punnett squares for each trait, and then after solving each probability, multiplying them together. If we start with the A alleles, we see that there's a one-half chance of the puppies having a heterozygous genotype. When we go on to the B alleles, we also see there's a one-half chance of there being a heterozygous genotype. When we solve for the C alleles, we see another one-half probability, but this time for the homozygous dominant trait. If we multiply all of our probabilities, we get our final probability of getting the genotype capital A lowercase a, capital B lowercase b, and capital C and capital C as one eighth. Now let's see a more complex example. In a cross between one genotype and another, what is the probability that the offspring will be capital A, capital A, capital B, lowercase b, and capital C, lowercase c, or capital A, capital A, capital B, capital B, and capital C, capital C? This or is a key indicator for the rule of addition. The rule of addition states that a probability of an event occurring in two or more alternative ways is the sum of the separate probability of those different ways. In this question, since we are asking for the probability of two separate events both occurring to create two different alternatives, then we'll be using the rule of multiplication with the rule of addition. Just like last time, we're going to be setting up different Punnett squares for our separate alleles. In our first Punnett square, we have our allele set up to show us that there is a one-fourth probability of having a homozygous dominant genotype, which is what we want for both alternative genotypes of the puppies. In our second square, there is a one-half chance of getting a heterozygous genotype, which is what the first circumstance wants, and there is a half chance of getting a homozygous dominant genotype, as asked for by the second circumstance. Finally, for our third Punnett square, there's a one-half chance of getting a heterozygous genotype, as asked by the first circumstance, and one-half chance of getting a homozygous dominant genotype, as asked by the second circumstance. Now that we have our probabilities of each allele, we need to invoke the rule of multiplication and addition. For the rule of multiplication, we multiply the respective probabilities of each allele combination. Then, invoking the rule of addition to see what is the probability of one or the other final genotype occurring, we get the final probability as 1 8th. I hope this video helped you to understand the rule of multiplication and addition and how they apply to Punnett squares.